When we think of a website, we usually think of a simple page, maybe some text, maybe a video, maybe some photos, maybe a button, some interactivity, nothing too special. But when we think of an iOS and an Android application, we think of something more powerful like camera access or video recording or Bluetooth or sensors, file system, contacts, etc, etc, etc. But what if I told you that with every day that goes by, the browsers are becoming more and more powerful and that if we want Bluetooth or notifications or file system access and all those things, we don't have to build an iOS and Android application anymore and instead we can do all those things from a website. Hello, Nicolas Emnida, and in this video, I want to show you some very new and not so new JavaScript web APIs that you maybe haven't heard of that will show you how powerful the browsers have become and in consequence, how powerful you as a JavaScript developer are. These are not JavaScript features. They don't come from the JavaScript programming language. They are web APIs. A web API is basically a new skill that the browser has that we as developers can activate by using JavaScript code. Bluetooth API. With the Bluetooth API, you can connect from a website to a Bluetooth device. This API bridges the gap between the physical world and the browser. Now you can make a website that talks to IoT or Internet of Things devices. Push API. With this API, we can send push notifications to the users of our website, even when the website is not loaded or is on the background, just like in an iOS and Android application. Contact Picker API. Access to contacts was only possible before on a native application, but now with a single line of code, we can access the contacts of the user's phone from the browser. All we have to know is what we want to see from the contacts and just ask for it. Shape Detection API. This API can detect faces, scan barcodes and extract text from images. Again, this was something that we could only do with native applications, but now it's very easy to do only with JavaScript. Here, for example, if we want to get the faces of a photo, all we have to do is make a new face detector instance and then just call the method detect. It doesn't get easier than this. Sensor API. The sensor API allows you to get access to the acceleration and the rotation and position of the user's device by making use of the accelerometer and the gyroscope sensors that most phones have. This API is especially useful when combined with the next API. The WebXR API is the newest version of the WebVR API. With the WebXR API, you can build AR augmented reality, MR mixed reality, or VR virtual reality experiences right from the browser. And making use of the GamePad API, you are able to also connect to the controllers of the user's device. So if your user is enjoying your website using a VR headset, you can also have access to the controllers and their location in the world. Vibration API. This is a tiny API. It's very cute. I just put it here because it works and it's just so nice in my opinion. The Vibration API allows you to basically make the phone vibrate. That's basically it. You can make the phone vibrate from the browser. So maybe if the user writes the wrong password or something like that, you can now vibrate the phone. As you can see in this code, we have two options to use it. One option is to vibrate the phone for let's say 500 milliseconds, or we can even create patterns. So in the second line of code, as you can see, what we do is the phone vibrates for 500 milliseconds. It will pause for 200 milliseconds and then start vibrating again. I mean, nothing too fancy, but I think it's kind of cool to be able to make the phone vibrate from the browser using JavaScript. Clipboard API. This is another cute and tiny API. With this API, we have access to the clipboard of the user. This means we can manage copy pasting more easily. There was a way of doing this before, but this API makes everything more standard and the code looks better. Web USB API. With this API, your website can access USB connected devices. For example, keyboards or computer mouses or 3D printers or IoT devices, whatever. Now, for example, if you buy a new mouse or a new keyboard or whatever, and you wanna configure that, maybe you are not going to have to download a driver in a program so you can talk to your new keyboard or your new mouse or whatever. 
Now instead, all you have to do is go to a website, plug in your keyboard, your mouse, and that's it. You can configure whatever you want. File System Access API. With this API, the browser is able to have more power over the files of the user. Currently, what the browsers can do is only read files that the users upload. But with this API, the browser will be able to create files and folders in the user's disk. So maybe one day we will be able to run Visual Studio Code or any application like that from our browser. So let's talk about compatibility. Where is it possible to use these APIs? Now, here is where I have good news and bad news for you. The good news is that most, if not all, of these APIs are already supported by Chrome, Edge, and Firefox, or are in the process of being supported by them. The bad news is that some features like the push notification API or the contacts API that are already supported by most browsers are very likely to never be implemented by Apple in Safari. Apple is on purpose not implementing some of these APIs because they might compete with the applications that are on their app stores. If you think about it, it makes sense. Apple doesn't want to make the web browser more powerful. Because if websites can have push notifications or Bluetooth or contacts API or sensors and all those things, then what is going to be the point of using the App Store? According to a Microsoft Edge program manager, Safari is now 1,000 APIs behind Chrome and 300 APIs behind Firefox. And I think it really says something when Microsoft, that used to have Internet Explorer, is now complaining about Safari. This also affects all iOS users because even if I go to the App Store and I download Chrome for iOS, still the engine that is rendering the page and all that is Safari. But still, I think it's amazing to see how powerful the browsers are becoming. And I think it's even more amazing that all we have to know to use these toys is just JavaScript. One programming language, so much power. I personally think that right now is one of the best times to be a JavaScript developer and it's going to become even better. And that's it for this video. But before we go, if you don't know JavaScript and you want to learn JavaScript and you want to learn it for free, please check out the link below. There you will find a free eight hour JavaScript course for 100% beginners. So go and join the course is for free. I hope I see you there. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay happy, be healthy. Eat kimchi. Kamsamida. Salam heyo. See you on the next one. Bye bye.